but he claims that. Right. Um, so I've known him for a long time, and and you know we had our ups and downs in terms of um, you know some things throughout the years. But you know Alex is a teammate. He works extremely hard. Uh, he, he might be one of the hardest workers I've I've ever played with in terms of his craft. I mean he gets out there and he gets after it. Um, but yeah, the media had they were fixated on our relationship, so to speak, and that's all they spoke about. Uh, but as far as coexisting on the team, not an issue. No, no. I mean, we're, you don't have to go out to dinner with, I'm not speaking about Alex in general, but you don't have to go out to dinner with guys to play with them. I mean, we, me, they did a, Sports Illustrated did a cover with me, Jorge, um, Andy, and, and Mariano, and uh, they took us out to lunch. We went to lunch together and spoke. And that's the only time we've all been out to lunch. And we played together for <laughs> 20 years, you know what I mean? But I think the media fixated on the fact of whether or not me and Alex were going out to eat together. They don't see us at lunch. And they just, I think they made it bigger than it was. What was it like when Joe Torre was gone? I, I, uh, he was such a vital part of your life. <clears throat> yeah, it was tough for me. Because um, you know, Mr. T's like a second father, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the only manager I had, he gave me a chance. You know, uh, I was spoiled. We were spoiled. You know, we're in the playoffs every single year. It seemed like we we're going to the World Series all the time. And when that's happening, you just automatically in your head you assume that it's going to continue to happen. And then all of a sudden he's gone. So it was, it was, um, yeah, it was difficult for me. But uh, you know, he went out to L.A. and managed the Dodgers and stress-free and tan and looking young now. He so, did. Yeah. So, God, he looked good then. Yeah, New York's like dog years sometimes, so <laughs> he, uh, he looks younger out. One of my favorite pictures, it's on my wall to this day above my bed is all the shortstop shirtless. Oh, come on, I'll stop. In, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. in Sports Illus. There it is. Come on, stop. <laughs> Click that. This looks like Who's Menudo or something. <laughs> Who's working the slide? <laughs> next, next slide. Look at you know, that. that. There that, is a young Derek Jeter. Well, that particular, and this is a true story. I don't know what any of those other four guys are going <laughs> to say, but this is the absolute truth. We're in Miami, and we're doing this Sports Illustrated shoot. And uh, Walter Yost, the, the famous photographer with SIs there, and he says, well, I'm going to have everyone take their shirts off, take a picture. I'm like, I'm not taking my shirt off to take a picture. The other four guys couldn't wait to take the shirt <laughs> off and take a pin. Now, these are not rumors. This is the truth. And I'm sitting there. They're all waiting on me. This is the last shot of the day. That's, you see, there's no smile on my face. Right. Uh, you see the other guys, right? That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the La Tigra stare. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. Uh, who's that? That's Gonzalez, Renteria, Ray Ordonez yeah. in the back. And then Alex Rodriguez right there front and center. He's smiling. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, the next one. There you go. Your 3,000th hit. I mean, right. there, there, there are some ways to get a three. You could hit a little bleeder through the right side. You could <clears throat> chop one. You know, on the left side, you could flip one into right. That was kind of your signature swing, but uh, you went overboard on that one. Let's take a watch. <laughs> I mean, that was a bomb, man. That was not a wall scraper. That that had some carry. I got it pretty good. Yeah. yeah I, got, I got it pretty good. I, I mean, yeah, come on. That, that This storybook time. I mean, this 3,000th yeah. hit, you hit a home run off David Price. Yeah, you know, we talked about playing hard and, and every time you're on the field, but I had my mind made up. If I hit a slow dribbler, I was not going to be safe at first base because I didn't want him to replay a slow dribbler to third base for an infield. Come on, really? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> okay, good. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But, uh, yeah, I was hoping that I hit it hard. That was it. But, um, yeah, I guess all the stars aligned. They aligned again in your final Yankee Stadium at bat, which if you're going to do it and you're going to win a game in your last game last year, I mean, what better way than with this swing and with this ball into right? Ironically, I believe that's the only game I've ever played at Yankee Stadium where we were mathematically eliminated. Which is incredible. Career. Yeah, so it was kind of odd to, you know, it was, it was like a playoff-type atmosphere, at least in my head. I don't know about anyone else's, but it seemed like we were playing in the playoffs. And, um, I mean, you can't. See, all the things that happened had to happen to lead up to that moment. I mean, I didn't want it to get to that moment. I was ready to walk off the field in the ninth inning, but uh, it's just one of those days. 
mean, you've had this 20 year career and now you're bowing and getting gifts. I mean, some of these gifts, by the way, we can show these pictures. Uh, the boots from the Astros. You, <laughs> where, you wearing the hell out of those these days, Derek? You know, actually, I've, I've used a lot of the gifts. I really have. A couple golf trips I've used. Well, that's a good gift. Yeah, How about like a stand-up paddle board that you got from the Angels? <laughs> my, uh, that's awesome, by the way, but, you know, my mom wants to use that. <laughs> uh, you know, the way that um, the organizations that I've basically been trying to beat my entire career uh, and the fans who dislike the Yankees or may have maybe rooted against me for most of my career, if not all of my career, the way they treated me my last year, is, it's, uh, it's hard to put into words. You know, the epitome of that was playing in Boston the last three games. I don't know if in this social media world or this kind of cynical world now that anything speaks more to what people across baseball thought of you than your final time at Fenway Park. Let's watch. His final hit an RBI single as Jeter says goodbye to baseball. And baseball says goodbye to him. That's really cool. Yeah, it was. Um, I never thought I'd get cheered at Fenway Park. <laughs> They've screamed at me, but not good things. As you look back on that, I mean, that, that, what, what a great send-off from, from the, this arch rival and the, those fans standing and applauding you and chanting your name. I, what, what, what a brilliant moment. Yeah, after the last game in New York, um, you know, there was talk of whether I should have just ended it there and, and understandable because, you know, playing at Yankee Stadium, how it went down, you can't top it. I mean, there's, there's nothing I could have done at Fenway Park that would have topped it. But, you know, I, out of respect for Boston and their fans and their organization, then, uh, you know, I wanted to play those couple games there. Is it weird on a, and maybe this is too deep, but to turn on the TV now a year later and say, wow, they're still playing baseball. No, it's awesome. Really, it, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's, uh, I went on my first summer vacation ever <laughs> a month ago. I mean, you laugh, but I, you know, I went to my grandparents' house when I was 11 or 12. It was the last time I was on a summer vacation. And I'm not complaining, trust me, I'm really not complaining. But I think when you, we talked about this earlier, I think when you're removed from it, you realize how difficult it is to play those many games throughout the course of a season.